Welcome to our panelists and viewers joining from many different places today. Uh, my name is Sean Kelly, and I am the Assistant Director of Career Advising here at the School of Public Health at Brown. Today's webinar focuses on careers in the nonprofit world. I thought I'd share some context. Uh, for the last three graduating classes, about 12% of our graduates have gone on to work in the nonprofit world. And in the most recent class, uh, nonprofits were tied with consulting and government positions. I'll share our outcomes page uh, with you right now, just so you can see for yourself. It's a new page that we posted. Um, and today I'm welcome, uh, excited to welcome three recent Brown graduates uh, who I'll now introduce. Uh, thank you all very much for being here today and sharing your perspectives. We're very fortunate to have you. First is Yuki Davis. Uh, Yuki is the manager of policy and advocacy at Every Mother Counts. She supports the organization's efforts to uplift community-led change to achieve equitable health outcomes for pregnant and childbearing people. Yuki has extensive experience in health equity and reproductive health access, having worked with ANSWER, the Southern Jamaica Plain Health Center, Eastern Massachusetts Abortion Fund, Decolonizing Global Health Conference, and Mali Health. Yuki recent com recently completed her Master's of Public Health in Global Health and Population at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health after graduating with Bra from Brown with a degree in Development Studies. She's also a birth and abortion doula. Welcome, Yuki. Thanks for joining. Jun Zhao uh, is currently a research study coordinator for Silent Spring Institute, a nonprofit environmental health research organization. Her work focuses on understanding the human health effects of chemical contaminants in drinking water. Previously, she worked as a research lab manager for the Sleep, Health, and Society Collaboratory at the Pennsylvania State University. Thanks for joining us today, June. Last but not least is Caitlin Rabb. Caitlin is responsible for policy analysis, advocacy, research, and project management in areas related to health at Rhode Island Kids Count. Caitlin received both her Bachelor of Arts and her Master of Public Health from Brown University. While at Brown, Caitlin wrote her master's thesis on Black women's breastfeeding experiences. She's deeply committed to reducing and eliminating racial and ethnic disparities in maternal and child health. Welcome, Caitlin. Thanks for joining today. So first, we'll get started uh, with questions submitted in advance and welcome questions throughout the webinar from our virtual crowd using Zoom's Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. So before we talk about life after Brown, I always like to pose a question to our panelists about life at Brown. Um, and so if all of you could, in any order that you prefer, uh, name one experience from Brown that you helped think, uh, sorry, that you think helped you in your current position, either in getting the job or in your day-to-day -day role. Uh, I'll go first. Um, so I think writing my uh, master's of public health thesis with um, my advisor, Joe Braun, who is currently um, in the EPI department, was um, one of the biggest factors of getting my position now um, at my nonprofit job, um, mainly because it directly is the same research that I am doing now. Um, and it also gave me insight into what it was like working directly with a principal investigator or PI, um, doing check-ins, weekly check-ins, as well as um, data analysis and um, thinking about logistics of how studies should be run. Happy to hop in next. It's been a while since I was at Brown, but I think um, the program that I did for my undergraduate studies was development studies um, housed within uh, the Watson Institute. And that was a really formative experience for me, not only taking a critical lens at global health and global development work, but really creating a community, um, like a thought community with all of my fellow students in which we were able to kind of explore all of the different pathways in which one could do global development work and that really opened my eyes to kind of all of the different opportunities within within one field. Yeah, um, I can hop in next. So I think that my experience, um, one, like June said, writing my thesis was very um, helpful in terms of one, my day to day work with research um, and understanding that field. Um, additionally, I was a Hassenfeld Summer Scholar in the summer of 2020, um, which I worked on with like childhood obesity and made a connection there. Um, and I like did some community engagement throughout my undergrad time at Brown. So I think all those things kind of combined really helped me get this job and made me really prepared for it. Great, thank you all. Uh, and a, a similar question, I suppose, um, is 
was working in the nonprofit field always part of the plan um, or was your education an influence in, in your postgraduate steps? I'd, I'd love to hear your perspectives on, on why you chose the nonprofit sector specifically after graduation. Yeah, um, for me, um, it was like never planned that I wanted to work in the nonprofit sector. Um, like Sean mentioned, I worked for um, academia after I graduated from Brown. And the reason why I moved to the nonprofit side was um, I really wanted to be more involved with communities, especially community based participatory research, which um, I was not currently doing at my academia job. Um, I also really like working for the nonprofit I work for now because um, of their mission driven goals and that they also do the same like rigorous academic research, but it's for the participants um, that we collect data from and it's that whole mindset of the data belongs to them and we have um, an obligation to report back to them what the results are and not just give them a bunch of reports and say, hey, this is this is your results without just leaving them without any explanation. It's so funny, uh, on reflecting on my time with nonprofits, I'm realizing that I kind of never saw myself anywhere else but a nonprofit. I fell into this work through work I did with Mali Health, which is a community driven organization located in Mali and West Africa. Um, I worked with them throughout my undergraduate career, ended up doing my thesis research with them and then found a position with them for a year after my graduation. Um, and I think the reason why I've stayed in nonprofit work is really the focus on social impact. Um, I think that thinking about social change and justice driven movements is something that guides my career. And for me, while I know that other sectors pursue that, I think for me, the response of it responsiveness, kind of the iterative and adaptive nature of not profit work is really what has kept me kept me here until now. Yeah, I think that coming into my undergraduate studies, I wasn't like set on nonprofit work. I honestly didn't quite know what I wanted to do, but I think that all of my experiences with like community engagement and what I was really passionate about kind of drove me towards nonprofit um, work. And that's kind of when I would see cool things happening in the community, like they were nonprofits um, and that's what really interests me. And that's kind of how I veered towards this um, nonprofit world. Yeah, really interesting perspectives. Uh, here's another question. Do you think that, you know, obviously community focus was a big inspiration for you, um, but does that also say something about the type of people or the kind of people that you work with um, when it comes to nonprofits, you know, is that a differentiator between working for a for-profit organization because there's a sense of altruism, perhaps, uh, among your colleagues? If anyone could comment on on your experience working with others in the nonprofit world, um, for like for my company, I love that everyone has the same like passion and altruism, altruism and is like dedicated to the mission of our nonprofit. Um, and I see that more often in, in the position I am in now versus like when I was back in academia. So uh, yeah, I will say like the people are, um, they're like very similar because we're all working toward the same similar goal of like community engagement and um, wanting better well-being for the populations that we study. Yeah, and yeah, similarly, I think while every nonprofit is different, what I really love about my current job is how mission driven every single employee within the organization is, even if it's us on like the grant making and policy advocacy side or the communications and development or like community engagement side, everyone is working towards the same mission and everyone is super excited about making sure that maternity care is have high quality, equitable and respectful for all. And so um, that just brings us together in such a critical working community um, that helps all kind of the day-to-day -day, um, nonsense <laughs> that much easier as well. Yeah, um, I, Again, I, for those of you, I graduated in 2021, so I have not been in the workforce um, for that long, but from my limited experience, I think that um, 
the people that I've worked with are really good at advocating for others. And that's kind of what um, I'm also passionate about. So I feel like it's a good fit. Awesome, how inspiring. Uh, thanks for sharing your perspectives. Um, you know, we'll move into kind of the day to day. Uh, what do you like most about your job? And it doesn't have to just be about the nonprofit sector. I'm just interested to hear about your, your respective organizations. Um, so what I like most about my day to day as a study coordinator is that not every day is the same. I feel like I wear a lot of different hats um, and really it, uh, am like a Jill of all trades. Um, because one day I'll be contacting participants, the other day I'll be doing data analysis, and then I'll work on things like how to create 2D and 3D labeled barcodes. So <laughs> I like the that not every day is the same, and that I get to learn a lot of new tools to put in my toolkit um, to to get to um, pushing the study further along. Yeah, I would say um, the organization I work at um, does a really incredible job of being like a gate opener and a thought partner and a connector between a bunch of different groups. We have relationships with like community based organizations, but also policymakers and corporate brands and advocates. And so what I really love about the job is being able to bring people together with similar missions, with similar um, goals and objectives and ways that they're reaching them and really make those connections for future opportunities for shared impact and for collective power and um i think i really like doing that in my life outside of work as well so it's even more um lovely that i get to do it in my day-to-day -day too i would say that my favorite part about my job is Kind of one like learning something new every day um which is like great to be like a lifelong learner and not have to have grades for it or anything so um i think that um having making all those new connections um, and learning from different organizations and different groups and different people um has been really great Great. So everyone pretty much talked about collaboration at work can you give examples of, of how you collaborate um, with uh, local community partners, um, even uh, corporate partners, uh, to Yuki's point. I'd love to hear, what, what does that collaboration look like? Sure, so the project that I currently work on um, is a collaboration between um, a nonprofit, uh, yeah, nonprofit um, consultancy, as well as we work with Harvard School of Public Health, and then our nonprofit. So it's it's really like a true collaboration between all different sectors. Um, and, but it's, it's very, like, it's the same, like we meet weekly to discuss like progress on goals. Um, we also do um, like a, a research group where we like come and share like what we, what our successes are and like, what do we need to work on? And what do we see for like our next steps and like the end of this week, the end of the, um, the month and then our next three months, what does that look like? So it's a lot of like open communication, but also coming together in both like formal and informal um, areas so that we can also like get to know each other and how we all uh, work. So we can be like as efficient um, as we can. Um, I think the most kind of telling example of how collaboration looks like at my workplace is we started this uh, virtual perinatal support platform that provides text-based and vir virtual support group support for pregnant and parenting people in the New Jersey, New York City area, all within a birth justice framework. And this is a collaborative collaborative partnership um, between a couple of community-based partners, our organization, and then a global health organization with a technological platform to do so. Um, and we started last year in like May of 2020, which was such a fascinating time to be starting to learn how to work together. And I think for us, what was really important that, important was spending time on relationship building um, and really moving at the speed of trust and making sure that we were able to have enough conversations and open communication, as you mentioned, June, and um, 
the idea of shared values and mission behind this new gigantic project that we were putting up. And I think that has led to the strength of the project and its um, adherence to kind of community-based models of care as well. Um, and then I think additionally within the nonprofits that I've been working in, I work in fairly small nonprofits. I don't think I've wor ever worked anywhere that has more like than 30 people, um, if that much. And I think those smaller nonprofit settings for me, I really love because there are so many opportunities to step into roles and step into collaborations that you otherwise wouldn't have access to and, to, and kind of a bigger organization, company, what have you, um, which I think are just such incredible learning opportunities and that I, I valued it so much throughout my career. I think that Yuki and June did a wonderful job explaining and I don't have any more to add to that one. <laughs> All good. No, well, well stated. Um, uh, so, so it sounds like we didn't, I didn't ask you how large is the organization that you work for? Cause I think that helps again, provide some context to, um, to opportunity um, collaboration and uh, gaining new responsibilities, even agility in being able to work on new projects and, and develop, you know, different collaborations. Um, so if you could share A, approximately how big is the organization that you work in, and B, what do you think are the limitations of being a smaller organization if yours is a smaller organization? Yeah, so um, Silent Spring Institute, I think we are 22 people in our organization, so we are on the smaller side, and one of the limitations is that um, some of the like administrative work that goes like the I guess the background work that goes um, into like grants and yeah reporting of grants um, the study coordinator usually finds themselves having to do so like but I like um, I like like that because I'm more hands on so we do like budgeting I also do like grant reporting which I had never um, had experienced with being at a larger um, academic university before so. I like embrace the the experience of learning how to do that for the first time because then you kind of get more um, context of what actually all the effort that goes into applying for grants looks like. That was a very great positive spin on something that can be frustrating, I'm sure. Um, our organization, I think, is at 13 or 14 people at this moment. Um, which is super tiny for the amount of work that we take on, which I think shows up in kind of how much each person is expected to do. Um, yeah, and what capacity looks like. And I think we found it our, ourselves at like very limited capacity to make sure that we're getting everything that we want to do done. And it's hard to not get distracted by shiny things that you want to do. And it requires being very clear about your boundaries and very clear about your capacity and being able to realize that and communicate that with yourself and also kind of everyone working around you as well. Yeah, so Rhode Island Kids Count is about 10 um, people, I believe. And so again, pretty small. Um, and so I think that, again, capacity wise, there's only so much so many people can do. Um, and I think that we do a great job of having some type of overlap to where if somebody can't take on more, somebody can pick up the slack, but I think it's a challenge and a balance of um, making sure that we are taking care of ourselves um, first before doing this work. Thank you all for the positive spin, especially on, on those challenges. It's great to hear. Um, how does technology uh, help you do your job? You know, with such a limited staff, how do you use technology to your to your advantage? And can you give some examples if you have them? Um, so, technology definitely helps, um, like especially with like the pandemic going on, helps um, us in the at Silent Spring like keep in touch with each other. So we have a Slack channel, and like our channels are like general or random, but we also have ones that say like surviving these days and like coffee chats where we can all come together <laughs> and um, not just talk about professional stuff, but also personal. Um, and I guess as, as in the study coordinator role, I um, 
also embrace technology. Like what I feel like technology can like help us become more efficient um, and like kind of cut down on um, the like day to day thing. So for example, like we use a lot of, instead of like, you know, typing in like 15 uh, digit like barcodes that might take forever. We have like barcode scanners. So um, we use technology every day and we, I think it definitely helps. Yeah, I think the first thing that, that comes to mind is using technology to facilitate communication, um, especially kind of as we're dispersed in, in a remote environment working. And so having the Slack channels, having time on Zoom to not only talk about work and get through kind of to-dos, but also have that personal interaction and interpersonal time as well is so important in terms of building community at the workplace. Um, we're trying to figure out how to implement a project management software like Basecamp to figure out how we can best collaborate while cutting down on miscommunications or too many perhaps communication channels as well. Um, and I think those kinds of tools can be really helpful in terms of not or organizing, not only organizing like one's personal workload, but also those uh, opportunities for collaboration. Um, yeah, adding on to that, I think that obviously every most things have been remote for a while. And so having that hybrid option and keeping that hybrid option has been great um, for things that you can't make because there's so much going on and you can watch the recording and check up on it later versus just missing it and missing out um, is something that has been helpful. Um, and I think also with like outreach, using technology to reach out to people in the community has been beneficial. There are some challenges with like accessibility and things like that, but I think that overall um, it is beneficial. Awesome, thanks so much for sharing. Um, next, we'll talk about pathways. I think it's always important to talk about what does your kind of career journey look like? Um, and so where do you see yourself in the next few years? Um, what are your goals? Uh, what are your dreams? Do you plan on staying at the same organization? I know Caitlin's only been there for six months, so you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Uh, but I, I would just love to hear what, what are your professional goals in the next few years? Yeah, for me, um, I, I see myself staying at the, at the same organization for many years, um, hopefully running my own studies in the future. So instead of like, well, I, so instead of like working under a PI, maybe also being like a a staff scientist and also doing my own analysis and running my own um, studies with my own staff. Um, yeah. This question still does not not give me the heebie-jeebies, but I think um, I am happy to be kind of wherever I end up. I think something that's really important for me thinking about my career moving forward is making sure that my own values match the values of my organization and how they treat their employees and how we work together, um, which I think is a really exciting way to think about finding a job or being happy in a job. Um, I think I definitely want to still be within something similar to what, I, uh, what I'm doing now. I'm really excited about how we bring community voices into systems change through advocacy and through policy work. Um, so excited to explore more opportunities and um, pathways of doing that both at this organization and others. I am not sure where I'm gonna be, um, where I wanna be. So that's something that I need to think about for sure. Um, but I definitely think that, again, kind of echoing what Yuki was saying, just like making sure that where I'm working is matching with my passion and what I stand for, my values. Awesome. And I think it's okay to not know. That's that's part of the journey, too. That's exciting. So uh, thanks for being candid about that. Um, so some of you have international experience or experience working with international organizations. Um, so I'd love to hear about any recommendations for uh, connecting with international opportunities, even if you know Brown alumni who are working abroad, um, you know, where are they working and what kinds of opportunities are they pursuing? I'd love to hear your perspective, uh, just because there are a lot of opportunities abroad as well in this, in this arena. 
Um, so I haven't personally worked uh, internationally or abroad, but I do have a friend who was a Brown alum and my roommate that um, worked for the WHO in this health space, as well as uh, she is currently in Pakistan doing nonprofit work. So if um, any attendees are interested, add me on LinkedIn and I'll connect the two of you. I would say my main recommendation in terms of thinking about international opportunities is being super critical of your own motivations for going um, and really looking for that opportunity that not only matches your values in terms of international work and your own positionality with inter international work, but it's also an opportunity that you bring that special special sauce to and is really an opportunity for you to um, shine and be super supportive in the international realm. Um, I definitely loved working abroad and definitely also had my frustrations with it and have also had like many existential crises since then. Um, but yeah, I think being super thoughtful about those opportunities and what you bring um, is super important. I don't have anything to add, sorry. <laughs> oh, all good, all good. Um, so what do you know now that you didn't know then? Um, then being when you graduated or when you were in your first position. Um, just advice for students considering uh, careers in the nonprofit world. How should they prepare? What would make them more competitive? Um, what do you use in your day to day now that you didn't learn while you were at Brown? Um, would love to hear your, your thoughts. I think overall Brown prepared me very well for the work that I currently do. Um, besides, I guess, budgeting, <laughs> I guess, is the one thing like, um, I guess it's for like four studies to um, like lift off the ground, like there needs to be a funding source somehow. And um, it's very important to know like how much how much you allot yourself each year or how much things actually cost, I guess, the logistics of it. So um, if you're like looking for tools to add to your tool belt to be become um, when you're like looking for jobs, I think budgeting, even like personal finance, like those are great things to know um, and apply to jobs. It will make you a better candidate if you like understand the logistics and like the money side of things. I think something that I've been unlearning since being kind of in academic settings is like writing for a plain audience. And that's something that comes up a lot for me is like figuring out different ways to write um, and communicate for different audiences. And I think that has taken me a lot of unlearning of kind of academic speak for my own job um, to be able to make sure that I'm able to communicate the messages that I want to get across as plainly and as easily to understand. Um, and then I think another thing that I wish I had known going into the workforce is that your work doesn't need to be your entire life or all of like the work or mission work that you're doing. Um, and that you're able to have space, hopefully you're able to have space for other projects, initiatives, groups, collectives to be a part of that maybe um, you don't have the same kind of impact or political home at your job, but you're able to find that in other places. And so I wish I had known that um, earlier on that I can, my work doesn't have to be my whole life. I guess that's an ongoing lesson, but there are other ways to do kind of the work or kind of the movement work that you also wanna do outside of your nine to five job as well. Yeah, I think that in my in my one month that I've been working, um, I kind of think that I've learned that it's, for me, it was helpful to not know stuff and be okay with that and like just be transparent about it. And again, always learning about things. And I think that school and classes and grades and all that kind of makes you always think that you always have to know the answer, always have to be top of the line, everything. And like looking at, um, not knowing stuff as a vulnerability. Um, but I think that sometimes in spaces, um, it's okay to not know that and use that as an advantage and a new perspective and make sure to 
um, highlight what you do bring to the table, even if it's not that expertise and knowledge. Oh, that's great. I'm super inspired by you all, by the way. <laughs> and I know that our attendees are as well, but just thought I'd speak for myself. Um, so, so knowing what you just shared, like what resources did you tap into to learn how to budget or finance? And how did you unlearn, you know, academia, for example? And how, how do you approach your work environment in a vulnerable way um, to, to be open to new ideas and new ways of doing things? Um, is that personal? Are there professional networks that you've tapped into? Are you taking online courses for free, you know, um, or all of the above? Love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I think there are, there are a lot of like open source resources out there um, for budgeting. I actually tapped into my LinkedIn um, network and contacted um, alumni or friends who are also in this like study coordinator um, space and learned budgeting from there. Um, I also took uh classes like free classes from like course era i'm i'm sure there's other um, websites out there for like data analysis um if there was like a specific um tool that i needed to learn in r and i was very interested in it i would go ahead and you know take time away from work to en enrich myself in in like hot like a personal hobby to learn more about um more like a, more R skills um, that I personally wanted to learn that I could also use for work. You say um, doing R <laughs> off hours is incredible. Um, I think for me, a lot of it was trial and error and like learning on the job. I think, in, especially in terms of writing, it was being able to write what I thought was right and then go through it with a very lovely and supportive manager to kind of edit it down and like hone that through learning. I think reading a lot has been really helpful for me for of like not things that I necessarily read in school, but reading kind of other publications of similar allied organizations as well. And then I think in terms of the overall like work experience, building a community of people kind of within a similar field or who have similar views on work um, and workplaces or who work in similar environments and being able to have those people to tap into, to talk through things, to share frustrations or wins and achievements. Um, and I was able to find that kind of through my grad school community, but I think there are other ways of tapping into those networks and building those communities as well. I am for sure still learning, so I'm not sure if I quite have an answer yet. <laughs> That's awesome. And I have to clarify, I think I said six months. You've only been there for one month. Thank you for sharing your perspectives. That is like awesome to hear because a lot of people, you know, they might connect with an alum who's been working for 10 years and it's a very different perspective. So um, it's, it's great to hear from you. Um, so I always like balancing the philosophical with the tangible, like what do I actually do to get a job? And so um, you know, it, it is a process uh, of thinking through both of those um, perspectives, but um, what specific resources did you use to find your current job? I would love to hear um, in terms of like search resources, people, etc. cetera. Um, so I found my job uh, via LinkedIn. I like to follow people on LinkedIn that are maybe like where I see myself in five to 10 years. Um, and like, they're all from different industries. So like, I really like, um, I'm really interested in the beauty industry and how like sustainable it can be. And so I follow a lot of people from different fields, but I, one of the, the person, people that I followed advertised this current role. And um, I like that's, that is like the power of networking these days. So like if you follow people that you see yourself in the field that you see yourself in, they're most likely will advertise positions um, that have like aligned goals with yours. Um, I got my job in a very funny way. I started at the organization four years ago and in kind of an admin role that I found on Idealist, I applied, went through the very like traditional application process, um, but I've been able to maintain those relationships with this organization and with my current manager. Um, even as I left and went to grad school and then was able to start those conversations when going back. And so I think, yeah, it's definitely all relationship based. Um, and I, I do love 
kind of tapping into alumni networks or LinkedIn people or kind of other communities to just pick people's brains. And even if you have those like chats or um, small coffees or talks, I think not only can that help build your network, but it can also kind of open up your eyes to different opportunities and different pathways to get um, to different places within the field too. Yeah, so I um, heard about this job kind of two ways, I guess. So one um, is via like the Brown job portal um, that I was very, very active on for a while there. Um, and then secondly, um, somebody at the company reached out to me through, they found out my contact through like a professor at Brown who I took a class with. Um, and so before like there was even a job on the table or anything, we just like had a nice Zoom call again, networked, kind of got to know each other. And then when that job did come up, um, I kind of went through the process there. So um, I think it kind of just happened like that, yeah. Oh, it's great to hear lots of different pathways to, to finding jobs and there is no one answer. And so again, being open to connecting with a lot of different people and using technology to find positions, especially in today's day and age, uh, great advice. Um, one last piece of advice that you wanna share with, with uh, attendees in our webinar right now, go for it. it doesn't have to be related to jobs <laughs> even. I guess um, something that Yuki mentioned before is um, capacity. So um, it's good to know your boundaries, especially in like health or research. Um, and I guess also like have those conversations with your supervisor or the director of your organization. Sometimes I feel um, there could be like a disconnect between like people at the top versus like support staff at the bottom. Um, because it can only help your organization evolve to a better um, place where they're starting to understand, you know, what your boundaries are and that um, I guess the other piece of other piece of advice is to not also like tie your worth with your job, knowing that you are your own person, you can have your own interests like outside of your job and like that um, work life balance is very important and that you're like two different people like you outside of work and you at work. It's really lovely. Um, I think I may have mentioned this earlier, but I think being having time to reflect and understanding what you really want out of a work environment and a work culture and what values you really want to see in practice from the organization or what have you that you're working for is really important and making sure that you understand that going into a job and figure out ways of asking that throughout the job interview question to kind of peel back the layers of what they're actually saying their work life is versus what is actually happening for employees is super helpful. And I think with that, once you're in a job, understanding that organizations have made, are made up of people and people are inherently imperfect. And so there are always be uncomfy bits or things that don't feel great, but understanding when you're able to check in with kind of what you need and what you value and what you prioritize and knowing kind of what those boundaries are and and being able to check in with that when things don't feel as great in the office sorry i i don't think i have anything to add to that one <laughs> No, that's great. Um, so we do have a question um, from one of our attendees. Um, would you recommend nonprofit work as a good experience during a gap year before medical school? And if so, when is uh, the right time to start applying for those opportunities? Yeah, I, I would recommend nonprofit work um, as a gap year before medical school. I think I know a couple of um, my classmates who have like gone that route before um, applying to medical school. Um, I would apply early and also make it very um, apparent to the nonprofit that you're working for that, you know, your goal is to like work for this nonprofit for like a shorter amount of time. Most positions envision you to be there like long term. So to be transparent about that. 
um, and uh, apply as, as early as you can. I, but I, I think right now um, there's like a shortage in labor, so a lot of a lot of nonprofits are are hiring. Yeah, I don't know how much I can add to that. I think I would just do a blanket piece of advice that I think as much work experience as you can get before going into a graduate school, be it medical school or like any other grad program is so helpful and so valuable. And I think brings a lot of purpose and maybe refinement to your graduate studies as well. I know that was super helpful for me going into grad school and be like, okay, this is what I want out of this experience. And this is how I'm going to get it based on kind of what I've done um, work-wise going into that. Awesome. Well, I'll go yeah, ahead, Caitlin, I think, please. Um, June. Oh, no. June and Yuki said it great. I, I agree with that advice. <laughs> Love it. Well, uh, I just want to say thank you so much to you, June, Yuki, and Caitlin. Uh, we really appreciate your insight and perspectives. Um, and so we will be sharing this in the next week or so on our website. Um, and so you can check it out at brown.edu slash go slash careers. Uh, and I hope everyone stays well. Thank you again for your time. Have a great day.